outro cast. Thank you so much for doing this long time fan. And we'll get into that. But the girl from Plainville, you're playing a very polarizing character. How much research did you actually do on the news story and the attorney yourself? So I followed the case in real time back in the day. And then I watched the HBO doc before this was a series. And then when I got the offer for this, I rewatched the documentary again. And then when I said yes to this, I watched the doc again. So I've, I've watched the doc a few times. Um, uh, and my reaction to the case has changed wildly since I was first following in real time. I think in Real time, I, I was seduced by the headlines and the sort of, um, you know, titillation of it all. Um, sure. And then seeing the doc, I, I found myself much more sort of horrified because it, it felt like it's these two children um, who are, are, I felt empathy for both of them. And then doing the series sort of deepened that and, and made me empathetic for all involved. So um, yeah, I think I was really seduced at the beginning, unfortunately. And um, I am I'm very glad that I had to have my mind changed. Were you able to get any feedback from Katie Rayburn about how she feels about your portrayal? I didn't, and uh, I wasn't able to talk to her, but I also, uh, they were pretty clear with me that this is a jumping off point, not a, a direct mimic of Katie Rayburn. Um, you know, all we have of Katie is her courtroom scenes and her mm -hmm. press conferences, and that is a performance in itself. So it is not necessarily who she is behind the scenes or what she, she's crafted something because that is a part of her job. There's performance aspect. Um, so I think she should take comfort that this is not a direct representation of her. Um, and while we share a name, it is in the spirit of versus yeah. direct. But you're now prepared for the next time you have to play a legal professional because you got to do that side of it. So I guess less research the next time you're playing an attorney, right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> There's a first wives club quote that's basically like, there are three roles for women, babe, district attorney and driving Miss Daisy. And I have entered district attorney. <laughs> yeah, well, when I said before outright upfront, big fan, you're the worst top 10 all-time favorite show in our household, and you were responsible for a large part of that. Now, that character that you played in that, not so far off from who you play on The Boys, did that ever lead to you being pigeonholed where you always, they assumed like, oh, okay, she's this tough character in real life too, that's all she can do? Well, I would argue that Dretchen is nowhere near a Nazi, so I do think there's some differences. Fair. Um, a drunk maybe, but not a Nazi. Um, yeah, I mean, I do think that there's a certain, you get hired to do the thing you're good at because people, there's a lot of money on the line and people want to make sure that you can do it. And so um, the offers or things that I might have gotten in the past are similar to previous roles because that's been, sh that's a proven entity, right? Yeah. It's much more unusual to get an offer for something very different like this. And that's why I sort of had to jump on this opportunity is I, I couldn't believe that they were asking me to do it. Um, Cause I was like, what have they seen that makes them think that I could do that? Like normally I'm, yeah, hopped up on cocaine or um, killing people while flying <laughs> in terms of the two most uh, visible things that I've done. Um, but yeah, uh, there's always that danger, but I'm also not a celebrity. So it doesn't come into my mind as much. You know, there are people who are so identified with things that they can't get away from it. And that's a blessing and a curse. Whereas I, I feel like I'm sort of a journeyman actor and hopefully I'll get to work forever in many different things because nobody necessarily knows me. <laughs> I think you're selling yourself a little short with that, but in Wolf of Wall Street, it was kind of a background subdued role where you didn't lose your cool. And we've seen you excel in comedic roles, in dramatic roles, and this role as Katie Rayburn, totally different as well. Is there a kind of role that you haven't gotten to do yet that you're still hoping that somebody will write for you or you get to write for yourself? I would love to do like a like a turn of the century period piece or uh, I love fantasy. Like I read a lot of fantasy and um, I feel like that would be a really fun thing to do and just 
I mean, the boys is sort of the closest that I've had to that, uh, but I would love to do something like that. Um, and yeah, we'll see. I have, I feel like everything will come in its due time. And, you know, if it doesn't, I'll uh, retire young. <laughs> <laughs> but looking at your IMDb page, like there's three shows ahead. You know, the girl from Plainfield is, is down there a couple of entries. So it seems like there's that stuff. There's whatever's on the, the deadline.com embargo that you're not allowed to talk about. When did you actually film the girl from Plainville? We filmed the girl from Plainville like September through December of last year. So this is a very quick turnaround. Flatch, which is out now, welcome to Flatch on Fox, uh, is basically we shot one day of the pilot in March, 2020 on March 17th and got shut down and then filmed the series, we ended February, 2021, and mm -hmm. then it came out March, 2022. So that was like a two year process, which is a very long process. So everything's coming out right now, but we're shot over many different time periods. It's just because of COVID, I think things got all move around schedule wise. And it just so happens everything's coming out like this month. <laughs> Lose ya? Okay, oh. got you again. Well. Two quick, you're the worst questions, and then you're free. And the first one is, I asked Henry Rollins in an interview about his cameo and you're the worst, and he didn't remember taping it. Was that an entirely remote thing or was he actually on the set? That was a remote thing. And I think it was, we had somebody else on set, but didn't get to them in time as well. Like there was supposed to be, I think it might've been Travis Barker. <laughs> And I think he was like there for a couple hours and like we were behind and he had to go. And I think then they did Henry Rollins. Don't tell him he was second choice. <laughs> punk rock is punk rock. And the last question I have is Ben Folds, that show helped reinvent him in a way. Any recollection if any of that was improvised with Ben Folds? We didn't do a lot of improv on that show in general. And I don't think Ben did any improv. <laughs> I think Ben was like, I'm gonna do the thing that I'm supposed to do. But he was also really fun to have around. I think I have a, um, a couple of videos of him like randomly playing piano during breaks and he was so lovely. And um, it was definitely one of those things. I'm working with uh, Leon Bridges right now and everything in my power not to sing his songs. And the same thing happened with Ben Folds. We'd be on set and I would just suddenly be like, anyway, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> you know, like I couldn't help it. Um, it happens but the bottom line is i'm looking forward to whatever is coming next for me whether it's funny or it's not funny and congratulations on this great role you did your homework and it shows thank you so much thank you Aya. Outro cast. <laughs>